Hello and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for April 27th, 2020. My name is Scott and I work for Adafruit on CircuitPython along with a number of other folks in this meeting. Uh, this is our chance to chat with our community and f talk about what's going on in the wide world of CircuitPython. Um, this meeting is a regular meeting we have every week. It happens at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on the Adafruit Discord server which everybody is welcome to attend uh, attend and join the Discord server uh, by going to the URL adafru.it slash Discord. That'll jump you in. We're usually in the text channel all week, uh, and then we're in the voice channel on the Monday mornings. Um, if there is a U.S. holiday on Monday, we tend to bump the meeting time. So uh, check out the, the meeting notes repository for a link to an iCal that you can import into your calendar so that you can see when all of the upcoming meetings are. Um, that repository also has a list or all of the notes going back till 2017 when we started this meeting, which is kind of a crazy way to say it. Um, and I'll just jump that in the notes since I'm on it. Uh, this meeting, everyone's welcome to attend. It happens in five parts. We start with uh, community news, which is a general preview of uh, the newsletter that goes out on Tuesday. And uh, then after that, we do State of CircuitPython Libraries in Blanco, which is kind of a statistics and objective overview of the health of the project. Keeps us grounded in reality, hopefully. And then after that, we have Hug Reports. We do Hug Reports and then a section afterwards as a round robin. Um, hug Reports, the goal is for everyone to get a chance to say uh, thank you to other folks who've been doing awesome work within our community. Um, <laughs> Jeff, the, the links you could find in the, the bottom link to the, to the newsletter. I just snagged those. Um, so Hug Reports is done as a round robin so that we can hear from everybody. So if you are uh, text only, let us know like Geek Guy just did. Or if you're just uh, listening in, let us know you're lurking. If you want to double check that we have the right status for you, please drop in the note stock and, and double check there. That's what I'm looking at as I go through here. Um, Hug Reports is a chance to just say, uh, uh, take a minute or two to thank folks for the work that they've been doing. After that, we do status updates, which is done as a round robin as well, so we can hear from everybody. And its goal is to spend a minute or two on what you've been doing in the past week and what you plan on doing in the coming week. It's a great way to get tips and tricks from other people about what you're working on. Uh, last up, we have a section called In the Weeds, which is a chance for any sort of longer form questions and discussion. Uh, if topics come up earlier in the meeting that we think will be kind of longer to discuss, we save them till the In the Weeds section. If you have topics for that, drop them in the text channel or pull up the notes doc and add them to the list there. We'll call on the topics uh, at the end by that. Um, I didn't say it before, but I should uh, give a heads up. This meeting is recorded. Uh, I'm recording both the CircuitPython text channel along with the audio coming in from the Discord voice channel. So consider that if you choose to speak in the meeting as well. Uh, and the recording is posted to the Adafruit YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Adafruit. It's also made available through podcast services as an audio only thing. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, with that, uh, I should, oh, the last thing is I will be taking time codes, which is a way for you to look through the notes and figure out where in the, the video or audio recording has the interesting bits that you want to listen to. So uh, I tried to keep talking while I take time codes, but I don't always manage to do that. So uh, I'll do that. So with that, I'll take a time code uh, and go to community news. Uh, first up, uh, MicroPython, uh, the kind of source project, the originating project of CircuitPython, turned seven in a couple days. So uh, happy pre-birthday to MicroPython. And uh, thank you to Damien for, for starting this crazy idea of Python on microcontrollers. It's worked out for them and it's uh, for, for Damien and all of us. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, next up, uh, we had 5.3.0 RC0 be released last week. Uh, thanks to Jeff for doing that and leading the way. Uh, check that out if you're wanting to try the latest and greatest stuff of CircuitPython. I think the major things are the, the, 
the addition of the F7H7 port along with the protomatter RGB matrix display support that Jeff did. Um, turns out Google has a thing called site. Oh, I should take 10 goes on this. Too busy talking. Um, Google created this thing called Cyanobyte, which auto generates drivers for I2C devices, apparently. And uh, somebody's ported that to MicroPython, which is neat. And I'm curious and want to take a look at that. Uh, it's always good to make things more accessible from there. Uh, next up, we have, uh, turns out Harvard University started offering online, free online courses that includes programming. So if you're looking to uh, polish up your chops <laughs> on programming, uh, please check that out. I know that the Stanford course was wildly, wildly popular. Um, so check out the Harvard course. I'm sure the, that stuff is really interesting. And we all have time right now, so, so check that out. Last up, and again, in the vein of news that I want to look into that I haven't yet because it's Monday morning, uh, there's a new CircuitPython library for e-ink displays from Plastic Logic, a company, <laughs> yeah, a company in uh, Germany, I believe, that creates uh, e-paper di displays. So they've made CircuitPython libraries there, and, and we, it would be great to get those in the community bundle. Uh, we'll definitely take a look later. Uh, and as Katni pointed out in the chat, um, for Stanford's course, they expected a thousand people and ended up with eighty thousand people applying. So they had to turn some folks down as well. Um, all of this and a lot more is going to be available in the newsletter tomorrow morning. Uh, if you haven't signed up for that, go to adafruitdaily.com and that uh, check the Python for microcontrollers newsletter. It goes out once a week and includes all sorts of Python related uh, information. If you have cool projects that you want to get out and let people know about, uh, we'd love to have you contribute content to this newsletter. It's openly developed on GitHub, uh, and we'd love to get pull requests for, for the newsletter. So help us out, help Ann out, who's leading the charge on this, uh, and get all the cool things that you've seen in there. And the, yeah, as, I, as Jeff points out, there's a lot more in the newsletter uh, tomorrow than, than what I than what I talked about. I just took the, the top juiciest bits, uh, but there's a lot of other cool stuff. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, next up, our second section is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. Um, we kind of think, think of CircuitPython overall, and then we think of it as it's uh, kind of three separate pieces. One is the core, which is the C core that runs on microcontrollers for CircuitPython. There's the libraries that happen around that. And then there's Blinka, which is basically a CircuitPython compatible core for C Python and Linux computers. So um, we'll go over all of those. First up, overall, uh, we had 29 pull requests merged, which is pretty good uh, on a day where I don't think we had a bunch of reorg stuff. Uh, we had 21 authors, which I th think might be a record, actually. It uh, goes to show that, that we're really picking up steam. So I'll just go through this list and, and shout out the folks that e either are not on this list very often or um, are new to it uh, from my recollection. So uh, thank you to Mu CX, uh, Anic Data, and Foamy Guy are usually in the Discord, but I don't see them on this pull request merged. Uh, PR authors very often, so thanks to those folks. We also have Dunkman00, Zobs, uh, Ann Lorn, CHFW, Jim Bob Bennett, uh, K0D, uh, skip, 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 HHK7734, TGS, The Electric Mayhem, Virgil Vox, uh, and that's it for the new folks. We had 12 different reviewers, which I think sounds like a really awesome number as well. So thank you to everyone who did reviews. It's a great way to get going uh, helping out with CircuitPython. So if you want to chime in on a PR and say, hey, I tried this and it still works with the sensor, that's cool. Or, or it still works for me. That's really helpful. Or, or even it's also helpful if it doesn't work for you. So um, reach out to us if you want to figure out how to get started with that. We're always looking for more reviewers because it means we can support more authors as a result. Issue-wise, we had 21 closed issues by 11 people and 10 open by 10 people. So again, uh, a lot of... Uh... 
Mark is correcting me about his username. Um, code. Okay. Oh, nice. I said K0D, but it really should just be code or pronounced with a Swedish accent. Um, so yeah, issues wise, we're down 11, which is great. And we had over 10 people involved in both opening and closing. So we're seeing more people being involved in general, which is awesome. Um, generally for the health of the project, uh, Blinka keeps expanding the libraries. Katni has been doing an awesome job polishing them up and keeping them uh, more uniform and, and fixing like all the Adabot checks and Summersoft has been collaborating with that as well. So our library quality is increasing, uh, which is great. On the core side, uh, 5.3.0 will, will be out shortly. That comes with both higher effects and um, Jeff's core work on uh, STM 32H7 and the RGB matrix stuff. And then uh, my low power stuff hopefully will land uh, as a 5.4, which will also probably destabilize things a bit. So expect to see a beta or a number of release candidates with that. Okay, next up, uh, I'll cover the stats for the core, and then we'll go to Katni for libraries and Melissa for Blinka. Um, on the core side, we had net nine pull requests merged from code mu CX. Zobs, our new folks, uh, seven total authors and four total reviewers. So thank you, everyone there. We had 10 open pull requests at the time of these stats, somewhere in the last 24 hours. Um, the oldest one is 139 days, which we should take a look at. We could probably just close or fix. Um, issues wise, we had four closed issues by three people and four open by four people. So we're net even for a total of 281 open issues, which is awesome. It's good to not be growing that very, very high. And then lastly, we have six active milestones. Uh, we're not tracking this super close right now. We're kind of just in a stable state where we're trying to get everything out as, as we fix it. Um, but we do have nine issues that are not assigned a milestone, which would be uh, a good thing to just take a look at. Uh, if we use, and I, at least I think of this as, uh, things not assigned a milestone are things that we just kind of haven't prioritized yet. So it's always good to keep that number low. Um, and with that, uh, we don't have any formalized download stats currently, uh, but uh, we should shortly. We're manually running the sort for the for the circuitpython.org right now, um, but hopefully we'll automate that in the next few weeks. And with that, let's go to Katni for libraries. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. So across all of our CircuitPython libraries, there were 17 pull requests merged by 13 authors, um, including uh, Duncan00, TGS, The Electric Mayhem, Anne Lorne, and Virgilox, and CHFW are names that I do not recognize. So thank you so much to um, all of our authors. And also um, thank you to all of our reviewers. Uh, in terms of merged pull requests, the oldest one we merged was 247 days old, so that's great that we're starting to get through some of the older stuff that's um, still sitting around, and that um, leaves us with 22 open pull requests. Uh, we had eight closed issues by six people and six open by six people, so we're net down. Um, and that leaves us with 178 open issues across all the libraries. If you want to see all this information, you can check out circuitpython.org slash contributing, where you will find a list of all the open PRs, all the open library issues, and all of the um, library infrastructure issues, which are sort of backend things that we want to follow a certain standard. And so we have a series of checks to make sure that all the libraries are up to that standard. Um, if you're looking to contribute to CircuitPython and you don't know where to get started, this is an excellent place to start. Check it out. Look at the open PRs. Look at the open issues. See if there's anything that interests you or anything that is at your uh, experience level. And there are plenty of good first issues which are tagged. Um, and take a look. And if you need help with getting started with Git and GitHub, we have a guide and also we are perfectly happy to help you get started with that so you can ping any of us for assistance. Um, 
but that is uh, a great place to begin if you're looking to contribute. Uh, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had one new library, Adafruit Circuit Python Phona, and a number of updated libraries, which I will not read off that list. Uh, and that is where we are with the libraries. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. Let's kick it over to Melissa to hear about Blinka. So this is Blinka, which is our um, Circuit Python library compatibility layer for single board computers, such as the Raspberry Pi. And, and we had three pull requests merged by two authors and two reviewers. There are now zero open pull requests, and there were nine closed issues by three people. Zero by zero people, leaving a net total of 29 open issues. And there were 2,110 Pi PPI downloads. We are currently supporting 45 boards. All right. Thanks, Mr. Blink. I had more issues closed than the other, um, the core. <laughs> that usually happens. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna turn my Wi-Fi off in case it's making my network bad. Looks like I'm still in voice, cool. Um, all right, let's go into hug reports. Hug reports is a chance for us to talk about uh, the awesome things that have been happening uh, within our community. It's a chance to say thank you to, for the folks that they've been doing. Uh, we do this for two reasons. One, it's nice to say thank you to folks. And two, it's nice to say it publicly so that we as a community have an understanding of the, of the things that we all value. Um, we do this as a round robin, as I said before. Uh, let us know if you're lurking, if you'd like us to skip over you and you're just listening. If you uh, don't want to speak or you can't speak at the, at the time, you can just say that you're text only and I'm happy to read your notes off in place of you. And that's true as well. If you're unable to make the meeting, I'm also, I'm always happy to read them off for you. Um, so I will start and then we'll go around, uh, in alphabetical order sorted by folks' username in the voice chat. So for me, uh, first and foremost, I wanted to say thank you to electronic Harry and Akir for helping Stargirl debug on Discord. Uh, she was having some watchdog timer issues, I guess. Um, a hug report again to uh, Ivan, IGRR, for the help with the linker crash. Uh, works for a specifin has been helpful, super helpful getting uh, the ESP32 S2 going, um, which I've been doing on a stream. Uh, thank you to Code slash uh, Mark Olson for the STM. 32 PRs and higher effect for reviewing them. It's awesome to see that stuff going on. Uh, Hug reports is OBS for the uh, NRF 52833 PRs. Um, it's always cool to get support for a new platform. Uh, I'm excited for that. Uh, Hug reports to Swavec for getting the heap analysis, script, analysis scripts going. Uh, they were having some issues with fragmentation and wanted to figure out how to debug it. Um, okay, we'll circle back to TG Techie. Um, so kudos to to Swavec for getting that, uh, digging in and, and getting it fixed up. And lastly, a uh, hug report to Dunkman00, George, uh, for getting uh, picking up the pixel buff work. Really w liked it and wanted to see it getting out to everybody. Uh, that Roy did originally. So Dunkman's picked up that torch and is is crossing the finish line for Pixel Buff, which is awesome. Uh, and so thanks to them for that. We are going to skip TG Techie temporarily while he finds a quieter space, I believe. And so we'll go to uh, Anik Data, who is text only, and says group hug. And then we'll go to Dan. Okay, sorry. Of course. Um, yeah. Um, so I'd like to thank Scott for uh, he's he's working low power for weeks and it's really hard and he's 
took a little break and now he's going to come back to it and try to get it really working. And also, uh, but when he was taking a break, he started working on the ESP32 S2. So I'd like to thank thank him for working on that and all the people who are helping him with that. There's really there's a really community, as he said. And in general, I'd like to thank the community because it seems like a lot of people. I'm getting more and more bug issue reports and questions and suggestions and stuff. But they're just a, it's the community is really growing. Maybe more people have more free time, but it's very good because it means that people are really using our stuff. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Okay, we got notes from David Glad, who says, uh, hug report to Jeff Epler for the RGB LED work. Hug report to Brent Rue for the quarantine clock learn guide. And hug report to Kevin Walters for the clue sensor plotter learn guide. All right, do Esther is lurking, so we'll go to Foamy Guy. Um, hug reports this week. Uh, I got one for um, Sedacious again. He spent some, some more time early in the week. Uh, again, he did this with me last week as well, so really thankful for him uh, helping me figure out the low-level uh, bit and byte stuff in the in the register library uh, pull requests that I've been testing. I've learned, learned lots and lots um, since I started working on that, so big thanks there. Um, DigiKey, um, I know uh, with Adafruit not shipping orders, uh, it seems like lots of folks have started turning to DigiKey, um, and, and they seem to have been doing a good job. I saw on the, um, the show and tell last week, I think they got some new sanitization equipment and all kinds of different stuff going on around the factory. So um, big thanks to them for, for keeping everybody safe and, and continuing to get uh, shipments out um, pretty quickly and stuff. And then um, one for uh, Carter as well. He added uh, some UART support on this breakout for the uh, AS726. The AS, uh, it's like a, a color sensor um, breakout board that was using, I think, UART, or uh, rather ITC um, by default, but it supported UART. Um, and now we have that in the library. Um, so thank you there. And then uh, the last one, just a group hub for the, the community. It's been great to see um, you know, like a couple folks have mentioned, the uptick in activity in the Discord, and, and it's nice to see um, everybody kind of getting together and just providing such a, a really nice, positive um, community to be a part of. I'm grateful for it. Awesome. Thanks, Foamy Guy. All right. Next up, we have notes uh, from, or a text from Geek Guy, who's text only. Uh, first, I'll report to Adafruit uh, for two things. One being the awesome open source hardware company, company it is. And two, for backing development of CircuitPython, which makes it very difficult for me to go back to tinkering with Arduino stuff. Um, hug report to Dan H. for his helping hands everywhere. Hug report to Foamy Guy for being everywhere on, on the Help With channels. Hug report to Higher Effect for working on the CircuitPython STM32 F7H7 ports. And group, hu group and community hug for being the most awesome online place I've ever been. All right. Next up, we have Higher Effect. So a uh, huge hug this uh, week to um, Mark Olson, who's been submitting all kinds of very helpful uh, bug and uh, feature uh, PRs for the STM32F7, um, including the F746 Discovery Board and the F746 uh, Nucleo, which both came in last week. Um, those are really cool. It's great to have somebody else uh, checking out the STM32 port and making good use of that. So thank you very much. Um, uh, thanks to Jeff Epler for some other bug uh, finds, such as the uh, flash issue on the s Arduino Pico, um, and uh, getting a quick fix in on that. Um, to, uh, to Jeff, Summersoft, uh, Scott, and Dan for their reviews on my documentation PR. Um, and uh, kind of checking out the guts of that and helping decide on some of the best practice for that. Um, that was very helpful. And uh, to Scott for his uh, work on the low power code um, to review that this week. And I'm really looking forward to having that in the core of CircuitPython. So thanks all. Awesome. Thanks, Hire Effect. All right. Next up is Jason P. Thank you, Scott. First of all, to Ru for pointing out for IO request and again as well as summer soft and or helping 
Jason, you're cutting what? in and out. Can you if you oh, speak up? If you I'm... speak up, maybe it won't. Okay. Is this better? That was, but keep going. Oh, uh, okay. So to Brent, Brent Rue, Summersoft, and Katney for their help with the learn uh, the GitHub work I had to do. And again, I'll make a plug for Katney's Learn Guide for GitHub. We're referencing that all the time. And then finally to Jim Bennett for pointing me to his uh, IoT Central examples as part of the PR that's in there. That really fast-tracked the work I was doing late last week, so I appreciate that. Awesome. Heard you there. Okay, great. Cool. All right, let's go to Jeff. Hello. Well, I want to thank you, Scott. I want to thank Dan, Hireffect, Lamore, and others that I think I've forgotten for uh, reviews on my PRs. And a big thank you to forum user John C. Blacker. He found and reported a bug that I had introduced right before we went out with the 530 release candidate. And I'm so glad we released it without that bug. <laughs> um, I want to thank uh, Zoltan V923Z for continuing his work on Microlab. He's making it better every week. High and effect, as you're unmuted. As, as long as Excuse you me, sorry. Time to take that in <laughs> into CircuitPython, we're, we're getting huge benefits from it. And I just want to thank the whole community. The way this is put together is inspiring. And right now, I'm trying to take some of the things we do here to my other community, Linux CNC. It's been revitalized by, well, furloughed people who have more time to work on it. And so right now, uh, I'm working up the courage to suggest that we do a voice meeting just like this one, uh, but for Linux CNC. So this is kind of me committing to do that and thanking mm -hmm. you for um, bringing powerful ideas like that that really help us organize as open source projects. Awesome. Great place to start is making sure you have a code of conduct as well. All right, let's go to Jerry. Hi, I just a uh, socially distant, appropriate group hug for everybody. <laughs> a virtual one is totally appropriate. All right, thanks, Jerry. OK, Katni. Hello. All right, so I have a list. Um, first, uh, to Summersoft for a well-needed chat and for generally being great. Um, to Jeff Epler for taking notes today and for always being there for a chat. To everyone helping others on Discord, the current climate has caused an influx of new users and you have all continued to provide a positive supportive community that we have put so much effort into curating. It's brilliant to scan through the chats and see all the excellent discussions. Um, and not have to worry so much. Um, we have very few problems and we have very, 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 very many awesome things. So that's super excellent. And thank you to everyone who's been involved with that. To TGS on GitHub for persevering on a 247 day old PR and getting it finished up and ready for merging. To DigiKey for unbelievably fast and free shipping to Canada for the excellent partnership with Adafruit and for all the effort they're putting into keeping their people and shipments safe. To Adafruit for becoming the number one open source certified hardware company. We now have more um, uh, hardware projects, which is to say like any kind of hardware that we've designed um, certified than any other company. Um, and to Dylan for all the work put into sending the certification applications in. And uh, another one to Phil and Lamore for continuing to embrace the focus shift from programming and electronics to PPE and pandemic support uh, and for taking amazing care of Adafruit folks. That's what I have. Sweet. Thank you, Katni. All right, next up we have Kinger North. Yeah, I have a, a, hug, a group hug, uh, first of all, for everybody because uh, it's just a great group. But more specifically, I have a hug for... Uh, and B, who uh, posted my video on there that uh, on the working with uh, microcontrollers from my website, from actually from a YouTube site. So I'd like to thank her for that, putting it in the newsletter last week, be working with or the Python newsletter from Adafruit. And of course, a big hug to uh, Phil and uh, Lady Ada for all the work they're doing in New York City and trying to get things helped at that end. So that's great. Awesome. Thanks, King or North. All right, next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Let's see here. The document scrolled. 
<laughs> okay, I just wanted to give a hype report to you, uh, Tamir and JS Harper, for your thoughts on the Bunka I square C for unusual configuration um, pins uh, for the changes on that. Mm. And that's it. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah. Okay, next up, we have notes from Mark, who says, A hug report to Tanu for an interesting and fun video chat. Hugs to Higher Effect for getting through my PRs. And lastly, everyone on Discord for keeping me company during this home time. All right. Mr. Certainly is lurking, so we'll go to Summersoft. Hello. Uh, so I have a hug for Higher Effect for pushing through on, on getting the uh, STM32 documentation PR finished. Um, that one went way beyond documentation uh, <laughs> as as a subject. So um, thanks for getting that done. Uh, a hug report to Fox95 for jumping in and contributing to the community bundle. Um, they were submitting something uh, that was NumPy-like that wasn't in Microlab. Um, it didn't end up getting into the bundle, but I worked with them last week on on just getting through the development workflow, and it's not easy and I just wanted to say thanks for taking the time to, to push through it um, to add something to, to the community. Um, and then a group hug. <clears throat> awesome. Thanks, Summersoft. OK, last up, we have TG Techie. Um, as always, a community hug for making an awesome community that supports people entering the maker movement. Specific hugs to Dan H. And to Foamy Guy for um, answering my multi-typed questions uh, at all hours of the night. And a retroactive hug to Maker Mosa and Tanu for their display work. Awesome. Thanks, TG Techie. And that was Hug Reports. Next up, we do the same thing, uh, but this time for status updates. So uh, status updates is a chance to say, uh, a little bit about what you've been working on and what you plan on working on in the coming week. It's a great way for other people to say like, oh, make sure you look at this or make sure you look at that sort of stuff. Um, and for us to just all have a bit of an idea about what people are working on. So I will start and then go to TG Techie and go around. So for me, um, on Tuesday, I fixed up the STM32 low power stuff. Uh, and got a second look at the, the pull request. Dan tried some of it. Some of them worked. And unfortunately, the SAMD 21s were flaky over USB. Uh, so I was really uh, frustrated with that. But I've played enough Age of Empires this weekend to, to have fresh eyes. And I will look at that first thing this week after I'm through uh, the pull requests that I have open in my tabs. Uh, I made headway last at the end of last week on the ESP32 S2 build. I streamed it on Friday, so check that out. I kind of left the stream with it having an issue in the linker, but um, Ivan got back to me and suggested just dropping the GC sections temporarily. And so I, now I've got a ton of linker errors that I have to finish, so or that I have to fix. So when I get some focus time tomorrow, hopefully, but pr uh, at least no later than Thursday, I'll be able to put some headphones on and get through those linker errors and figure start to to hook everything up. Um, I want to take some time and fix or test the pixel buff stuff. So testing both pixel buff on uh, 5X and 4X to make sure that everybody has a, an okay experience. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Dunkman's been doing some good work getting that pushed out. So I, I wanna I wanna fix I, I wanna finally get everybody switched over to pixel buff. So that would be really cool. Uh, and so I want to put some time into that. And then uh, lastly, we haven't mentioned it uh, thus far, but I, I wanted to make sure I mentioned it, is that Helen Lee is working on an article for Make uh, about Python on hardware as, as a broad thing, and CircuitPython is part of that. So I offered to kind of virtually sit down with her and chat about it. So we're doing that tomorrow after I go grocery shopping, and uh, I will put a link to her tweet in the notes uh, if you want to chime in with projects and reasons that you like Python on hardware. Uh, so with that, I will kick it over to TG Techie. Uh, sounds like you have a lot in store for the week. <laughs> I will be, I'll try to keep it quick as always. 
Uh, I have two weeks of updates, but I'll start with my rolling project. My running project, or running one, is a Turkey Python running wristwatch. I finally got it to a point where it was stable enough where I could test Bluetooth functionality, and it turns out for some reason the NRF chip is broken, so I'll need to do some uh, more in-depth debugging, and that'll be interesting. I don't know if it's my board or if it's how I configured CircuitPython, so I'll need to go into that. Uh, and a big thanks to DanH again for help with that. And I did a lot of work on a graphical user interface library for CircuitPython, which I'll post a video of running on the watch. And that's been about it. This next week, I intend to add some more frozen libraries into CircuitPython for certain accelerometers. And that's about it. Awesome. Thanks, TG Techie. Thank you all. All right. Uh, Carter, are you lurking? Anecdote is lurking. Charles is lurking. And I believe Carter is as well. So we'll go to Dan. OK. So um... I'm still working on the Adafruit services, um, which are used for the Bluefruit Playground app. Uh, it was getting close to done, but it turned out there were some significant issues we had to deal with with packet buffer, having to do with how big the packets are. So um, I've had to go into Core Circuit Python to uh, change the computation of the size of a packet buffer or make it more accurate. And so as soon as I get done with that and that PR is done, then I'll go back to the library. And this change will also provoke some changes in a few other libraries that use packet buffer. Uh, next, I'm still planning to look at uh, Bleak for, uh, as, a, as a way of implementing BLEIO on host computers, starting with Linux. And I just got um, a Bluetooth enabled body weight scale and a blood pressure monitor. Uh, and I hope maybe to write some drivers for those, and we might have a project associated with those if it makes sense. I'm trying to measure my blood pressure right now, and it's varying enormously, so I'm a little <laughs> wondering what to do with this thing. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I like the Velcro, <laughs> the Velcro sound there, Dan. Uh, all right. Next up, we have notes from David Glad, so I'll read those off. Uh, David says, tested Brent Rue's quarantine clock on PyPortal replicated the quarantine clock on the Ada logger plus OLED Featherwing. And for non-CircuitPython stuff, I tried to reflash uh, an AVR for their crazy clock from Geppetto Electronics to make a weak clock. All right, Dewester is lurking, so we'll go to Foamy Guy. All right, um, so this week I got uh, some more work done on my uh, tile map game guide, or I'm sorry, yeah. Pretty much finished up the section about um, graphics, BMP indexed uh, BMP graphics, and how to create those and edit them inside of GIMP and get it exported back out for use with Display I/O. Um, so I'm hoping to finish up that within the next uh, week or two to get the rest of that guide polished off. Um, and then a couple other things I tested this week were the UART functionality that got added to the AS7262 library, uh, the color sensor. And then um, the Max uh, 31856 thermocouple. This was the, the first time I ever really looked at or played with um, thermocouples at all. So that has been kind of an interesting thing. I don't have um, I don't have an actual like thermocouple wire, but I just been hooked bits of wire from around the house and kind of seeing um, different readings and stuff. That's a fascinating little thing to tinker with. Um, and then. Uh, there was uh, some NeoPixel animation code. So this was a user in the help with um, CircuitPython Discord. They were trying to figure out how to animate some NeoPixels as well as some other LEDs and have it all work together, um, which, uh, you know, since we don't have threading or, or asynchronous, the code to do that is a little bit different. It's not too complex, um, but it does have to be done a little bit differently than it is in most of the examples. So I did some of that this weekend. And then uh, the last thing I did was a um, an old issue on the PyPortal library, removing some of the old style imports from before uh, before Display.io existed, or at least before it existed in its current state. Um, so there were some fallback imports in there, and I got that cleaned up and made a PR for it over the weekend. 
Awesome. Thanks, Foamy Guy. All right. Next up, we have uh, Geek Guy says he's text only, but uh, there are no notes. So if you want to drop those in, I'll, I'll add those as I see them or we'll, we'll circle back to you. Uh, so let's go to higher effect. So uh, th last week, um, most of my work was on the documentation PR, which uh, took a cluster of all these build flags that some of which I had introduced um, kind of sloppily in the very, very early stages of the STM32 port. Um, and uh, some of which were had kind of been uh, snuck in in other ways. So we had minimal, always small. We had all these different build flags. Uh, I took them all down to just one. You've got full build. And uh, you always have it on unless you want your code to be 192 kilobytes, in which case you turn it off. Now that's the only build flag that we have, um, which makes everything a little bit simpler. Um, also, it, as part of that process, I added the STM32 boards to the support matrix, which took some revisions to a couple of Python files um, and uh, reminded me that I need to brush up on my regular expressions. Um, I categorize uh, the model, uh, the modules across CircuitPython uh, by their common HAL implementation requirements. So basically, when you're making a port, uh, you want to turn on the modules one by one. And you do that by kind of having this to-do list of everything that you have turned off. And then as soon as you fill out that part of the port, you can take it off the list. Um, and it gets a little bit shorter. So uh, that's now uh, included in the documentation in uh, the porting guide. Um, and I also did a lot of PR reviews for uh, mostly Mark Olson's contributions, which included the uh, F746 Nucleo and the Discovery, um, and uh, various other uh, F7 double checks, um, and then also uh, the low power code from Scott and a couple other things. So um, continuing that into this week, uh, I'm going to be working on a couple of uh, kind of obvious board implementations, including OpenMV and the Toasty, which are both for the H7 series. Since they're pretty easy boards to add, they're just going to be a little pin definition. So um, I should be able to get both of those done today. Um, and then uh, the F767 uh, supporting some of the startup abilities of the F767 to enabling uh, the tightly coupled RAM so it's a little faster, that kind of stuff. Um, and then after that, I'm going to be diving into the IMX libraries and uh, the details of the IMX, which I haven't worked with before. So I'm going to be getting familiar with that um, so I can start hacking away at the, the NIM issues list for that platform. And then beyond that, I'll just be keeping an eye out for everyone else's bug fixes and PRs. Um, uh, as personal projects, I, got a, I had a couple of those pop up last week. Um, I've been working with a friend on our own STM32 development board for CircuitPython, which is going to be like a little castellated module that you can just solder directly onto your projects. Um, uh, that's something that I've actually wanted for a while, and it seems, uh, seems like we're, we're thinking that there might be some space for it, so we're, we're going to try one out. Um, so I spent some time on Friday working on that. And then uh, I'm also, uh, this Sunday, I was working on a project for putting for learning languages using CircuitPython on ePaper. Um, I, uh, I learn uh, Japanese and uh, try to learn some other math stuff on a system called Anki, which is basically a, a software system for flashcards that only tests you when you need to try and memorize something. Um, it's a kind of a smart flashcard system. Um, but uh, it only works on a screen. And I don't really like screens late at night. And I tried to do screenless Sunday. So um, I'm trying to make one that works entirely on ePaper using kind of a JSON database and a bunch of internal parsing stuff. So. Um, we'll see how that goes, uh, but hopefully I'll have some uh, stuff to show next week. And uh, that's it for me. Awesome. Thanks, Higher Effect. All right. Next up, we have Jason P. Thank you. Can you hear me now, Scott? Is it better? Yeah, I think it's better. All right. Sounds good. Um, it's been a fun last couple of weeks because I've been able to use some CircuitPython for a mix of work things and personal stuff. I was experimenting, so I ran across this software called QLab you can use for like a sound cart stuff if you're doing for casting videos or whatever. Video can control your cameras. Yeah, exactly. Um, you, can, you can control these triggers with keyboard or MIDI or other things. I thought, well, if I can do it with a keyboard, I'd be able to do it with a Pi port. So kind of was experimenting with that and using 
for triggers. So that that was kind of. I spent some time last week working with a well using uh, Feather M4 Express and an airlift to connect with Micro Azure. We'll do the same thing with AWS this week, and then um, that's really kind of greasing the skids. Uh, our company's got this Feather footprint MD plus FPGA board that'll be coming out in production soon. We got a little COVID delay thrown at us in there. It's it's really close, and so I'm kind of getting things ready with this. T box or I analytics box. The thing is, I can use the feather for all of that work, which is very useful in, in itself already and uh, applicable to a lot of problems. But then, I want to move that to you board that'll have the FPJ on it. Then, finally, uh, I mentioned quite a while ago, I've been working on earlier in this year for it's really a audio controller for this installation that's taking place in a nearby city park and it controls this experiential play thing for kids um, we're controlling all of that with it'll have or four feather m4 express boards a spark fun tsunami board in there some other stuff as well um, that's been delayed a little bit so i haven't touched but i know there's some things they're starting to keep me up at night so it's time to go back and stuff this week with that, but that's a really fun project that's it awesome thanks jason all right next up we have jeff oh it's me mm -hmm. hi again yeah. um so 530 release candidate zero went out with rgb matrix in it and so obviously i was really excited about that later in the week i got sidetracked on a lot of little things um I was intensely interested in JP's uh, project to show text on the TDD or TTY as we're calling it. And so I helped out a little bit there. And uh, yeah, so I also started on RGB matrix support for the STM microcontroller series, starting with the STM 32F405 Feather, but that is not shown first light yet. This week, I am planning to do 530 final, just the same as release candidate zero. And I will continue with RGB matrix for the STM. And as for fun stuff, uh, bread baking, because we are closing in on the end of bread baking season here in Nebraska before it gets hot. Hmm. And, uh, you know, you just got to do a couple of last loaves. And this one turned out beautifully. Nice. All right. Let's go to Jerry. Jerry can find his unmute button. Um, you got it. <laughs> I got it. Um, so I had a little bit of a setback this week. My uh, my trusty old Mac mini Ubuntu system, <laughs> um, disk drive, just about gave it up. So I uh, spent a lot of time putting in a, a brand new uh, SSD drive. It's, uh, it was nice. Found a, a really nice replacement drive and good instructions for how to ins install it. And uh, got it upgrading and updated to Ubuntu 2004, and everything's working great. Um, was able to get all the tools back in, and can now build Circuit Python and all the other good stuff. So that's uh, that's that, that went really well. And let's see. So not a lot of Circuit Python activity. I've been updating some old projects and uh, spending some time uh, just playing with uh, Zephyr and uh the real-time system playing with that on the uh nrf52840 and the stm 32f405 has been kind of a fun aside with the rainy week coming up ahead i should have more time to, to play with the toys and uh just show you my my woodshed project is coming along pretty well so I'll picture that up if i can maybe let's go on <laughs> <laughs> so busy otherwise it'll awesome. picture me up in a minute <laughs> There we go. Looks good. Awesome. Thanks, Jerry. Yep. All right. Let's go to Katni. Hello. Last week, I uh, continued through CircuitPython library GitHub issues, which is going to be on the list for a while. Um, started updating the CircuitPython Essentials audio out code to work with audio core and PWM, audio PWM IO, um, which is to say to work with NRF. It was never updated and uh, ran into that being reported finally. Um, so 
And it's currently the update that I put through is not working, though I missed something obvious. Um, I also updated the Circuit Playground library to have two new functions. One returns which board is connected, um, which at the moment is Bluefruit or Express. And the other one allows you to specify which board you're looking for and use that in your code. So you can um, you can basically say if the board that is connected is blue fruit, execute the following block of code. Uh, otherwise, don't. And that means you can write code that has functionality for both boards that may not um, otherwise work. Uh, if you're using it on Express, for example, there are functions that don't aren't, aren't compatible with Express. They're only compatible with Bluefruit right now. So things like that. Um, so this week, uh, finish up the audio out code update. Just need to figure out what is going on with it. It's It looks right, but it's, it's not right. So um, then test the Circuit Playground Express Circuit Python build with the board type check updates. Just make sure that it's still building um, and fits, rather. And then uh, finish up that update once the build is tested. Um, this all came out of the fact that the current sound meter code doesn't work um, because uh, of the way that the, the or there's there's some sound functions available for the Bluefruit that aren't available for Express. Um, so it doesn't work on Bluefruit. So that's how this whole thing started because the way that I was checking it was not scalable for later when there are more circuit playgrounds. Um, so we want to make sure that we're trying to future-proof updating things. Um, and then continue through GitHub issues. And I have a list of miscellaneous, uh, which inevitably grows, that I need to also address. Um, and so that's that. those two things, continue through GitHub issues and miscellaneous, are likely to be on the list for a few weeks. Um, and then other, uh, I'm working on porting my tabletop light box Photo Studio from running on a Raspberry Pi and running Python to running on a Feather NRF and CircuitPython. I opted to go with the mini TFT Featherwing for the physical controller. Um, needed to order that, received that this weekend. Thank you again, DigiKey. And um, looking forward to getting started on that port. I have the controller built. Um, it's going to be kind of complicated code, though. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting started on that. And that's where I'm at. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. I have one comment for you there. And let's go King or North was hug reports only. So we'll go to maker Melissa. Hello. So last week I worked on moving platform to tech and Blinka over to GitHub actions, which included adding documentation and formatting. Uh, Blinka was not being linted prior to this, and I needed to address over 800 issues with PyLint, which took me about a day. Uh, I worked on improving some Raspberry Pi installer scripts. I started adding the RockPy S to Blinka, and I wrote a generic sysfs pin class so that we should be able to get working on even the most difficult to support boards so they're easy to add to Blinka. And this week, I am going to finish up adding the RockPy S to Blinka, uh, start working on improving I2C in Blinka with unusual pin, conf pin configurations using an external library. Uh, I want to add I2C to the external CircuitPython Bitbang IO library, which is not the same as the built-in module. And I want to integrate the external Bitbang IO library into the Bitbang IO module of Blinka so it's easier for users to make use of that. And that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have notes from Mark Olson, who says, last week, uh, did the STM32F7 discovery and Nucleo port, working through enabling modules, uh, working on the VCP, the virtual COM port, which is the STM32 onboard debugger passing UART uh, to its own USB connection, which is nearly finished. Next week, uh, working on the SWDIO issue, number 2781, and also the STM32F7's LTDC, the TFT controller. 
In other news, uh, order to arrive tomorrow, including some dev boards like the ESP32 S2 Salda, so I can help Tan Newt with testing and dev. And I have been looking at very various data sources for auto generating MCU and board configs, especially for STM32. I was going to say F something, but no, it's just STM32. All right, that's it for Mark. Uh, Mr. Certainly is lurking, so we'll finish up with Summersoft. Hey. Hello. Uh, so uh, last week was a little light. Um, so for Rosie Pie, I, uh, since I got everything working again, um, I then started fighting uh, some USB mount issues um, when a when a test would be triggered. So basically, it builds the firmware and then resets the the target board into bootloader mode and then uploads the firmware. And that's currently where things start going badly because somehow it's smashing the firmware right and it just never resets. Um, or is never recognized again after that. So working through that, um, started tightening up because of that. I wasn't really seeing what was happening um, because the updates or when the exception happened, all of the the stuff, you know, going back to Physics CI and GitHub weren't getting updated because it just failed. So started working on that. Um, and then for the frequency in issue, um, that you had had Scott. So my Grand Central came in on Friday. Um, I tried to duplicate it a little bit and I, I couldn't. Um, so just tell me I'm uh, wrong. Well, I don't want to tell you you're wrong because you're probably not. That's not true. Um, I'm I'm so, off, I'm plenty wrong. Well, I mean, it's it's a pretty simple interface. I don't know how. Like so, yeah. basically, my only other thought is that it. If you had other things like display I/O running or whatnot, that may be interfering. Maybe the ISRs are getting knocked out or whatever. So, I think it's still worthwhile to to kind of dig into to see if if something else is is the issue. Um, so for this week, I'll, I'll keep looking into it. If you think it's worthwhile, if not, then we can close the issue and move on. I, I, yeah, uh, I wouldn't use too much. Like for all I know, it could have been like my breadboard was bad or something. <laughs> so, and then other than that, um, I'll, the only thing I have on the, on the docket for this week is, um, working on the Adabot thing I was going to do last week that I didn't get done. So that's about all I got. Awesome. Thanks, Summersoft. Yep. And thank you everybody for status updates. Uh, lastly, we have our In the Weeds section, which is a free-for-all for, -all for uh, well, not free-for-all, but a chance for us to have any longer form discussions or answer questions that we want to talk about. Uh, we've got one topic in the notes doc. If you have other things you'd like to talk about, hop in the notes doc and add them now, please. Uh, thanks, Jason, for chiming in. Happy to have you. And uh, with that, we'll... Uh, kick it over to foamy guy for the only in the weeds question i had a, a, a it may be a pretty quick question this week but uh, an issue came up over the weekend where the pi portal library um somebody had noticed there was a problem in the setup pi file it was referring to one of the required um the other required libraries incorrectly so when you went to do pip install through pi portal it would fail part way through um but it, it I saw the PR for it and, and we got it tested and fixed, but it got me thinking like, um, is it, is there some upside to installing libraries that aren't made for uh, Blinka in the single, the single board computers? Um, is there any upside in having those able to be installed through PIP or is that just like a, a kind of a signpost, a way for people to find it? Um, the, the fact that the fact that Pi Portal is on is on Pi PI is an oversight. It never it never should have been put on there. We have a list of libraries that are not on Pi PI and cannot be installed using PIP, um, such as the Circuit Playground library, um, for that exact reason. And um, I guess the best thing to do there is actually to file an issue because I think we should probably um, probably pull it. Um, no, it doesn't make sense to have libraries that are not made for use on single board computers and Blinka devices. 
um, on PyPI. And that's why we uh, recently came up with um, renaming setup.py to setup.py.disabled and putting in there the reason why. And um, then it doesn't push it to PyPI. Um, however, the default for when you create a library, um, it defaults to pushing to PyPI. So at some point, it, it, something got missed with that particular one, and that's why it's there. Okay. Makes sense. All so right. actually, if, if you can file an issue on the PyPortal uh, repo, that would be great. I will do that. Thank you. Maybe we should add a note to the learn guide for creating and sharing libraries. Could that be a configuration in Cookie Cutter that it asks you? Um, yes, it could. I imagine anyway. That seems like a thing that we're we're actually working to make. Um, right, I shouldn't say working. There's been an issue filed about making Cookie Cutter more aware of things because it defaults to a lot of Adafruit things that if you are creating your own library and you want to submit it to the community bundle have to be changed mm -hmm. and so if we can make it have be more be more aware of the fact that you are creating a community library i don't see why we would not also be able to have an option to say this library will not be put on pypi um use the setup.py.disabled the only downside to that is that you have to be real sure <laughs> <laughs> that it's not going on PyPI, and that's not that's not necessarily a decision that's made by one person. Um, we try to put everything we possibly can on PyPI, um, but that is that's a whole other angle. But no, I, I I think Cookie Cutter could be updated as well. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you all for chiming in on that. Uh, and that is the end of In the Weeds. We didn't get to In the Weeds today, which is good. Uh, so I'll wrap us up. Uh, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly for April 27th. If I remember right, yep, 2020. This meeting happens every week on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on the Adafruit Discord server, which everyone's invited to join at adafru.it slash discord. Uh, we'd love to have you in the chats uh, there. And uh, we're in the voice chat at the meeting time. Uh, if you want to know our, or get mentioned when we post things about the meeting, uh, we'd love to have you as a circuit Pythonista on Discord. So uh, if you're not in that group, uh, you can click your username to see what, what roles you're in. Um, if you want to be added to that, just ping one of us and we're happy to add you. Um, that way you'll get notified of the note stock and things like that. Um, we also have a calendar that Jeff put together. So if you want to keep track of the dates that we have meetings, uh, check out the calendar. Uh, and that's useful because uh, on Mondays that are U.S. holidays, we tend to bump it to the Tuesday. So that will keep you up to date uh, as to when that happens. And uh, this meeting was recorded. So uh, this will be posted on the Adafruit YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Adafruit, along with uh, going up automatically to podcast services as a as an audio only thing and the note stock will be linked to from the descriptions for the videos there uh, in case you want to be able to link somebody else to the notes or, or skim through it instead of listening to this hour a little bit over an hour long meeting i think that's it and i think we are normal schedule next week so thanks again to everybody who attended and we're excited to continue to see circuit python broadly grow um, so thank you to everybody for being involved and, and uh, keep up all the awesome work and stay safe. Until next week, see you all. Have Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week, everybody.